right now the coilovers are still set from the track from last year it's uh yeah. it's, it's pretty rough but out here getting its first miles put on it all yeah. the whistle all the time So we got uh, 77 miles on the motor. We brought it back in, leak down test, perfect. Less than 5% through all the cylinders. Compression test, perfect. It's broken, it's a race motor. Doesn't need anything more, it's good. Um, we were playing a little bit with the boost duty tables. Wasn't quite making what it should have been for the percentage. Come to find out, wrong gate springs were put in the waste gates when it got put together. Prong chart was looked at. So we're in the middle of pulling the gates back off and getting the correct spring pressures in there to uh, get it where we want it to be at. So the car's up off the ground right now. Brakes were a little spongy. Um, got to do a little more bleeding on those. Clutch we got taken care of. She don't wrap. <laughs> Should be pretty rowdy, I think. We already switched the springs in this one. In the middle of switching the springs in this one. It really sucks to do these ones. This whole manifold's been a fight, like, since we got this. This originally came off a 1G car. I got it from a guy and had a good deal. It's Red Jack Racing, old school. It was a good deal and I picked it up. Well, come to find out, Putting on a 2G is a lot tighter than we thought, so we had to do a bunch of custom, custom shit to it. But it's it's working. So. Yeah, it's really tight. It clears the radiator. We obviously built this dump tube so it clears. Um, we're making it work. It's just everything is super tight. Great manifold, just not a lot. Most of Most people live their life quarter mile at a time. I live my life quarter turn of the time. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Everything. That's, uh, that's been the story of this exhaust uh, is a quarter, quarter, turn. quarter turn at a time. So we're in the middle of switching gate springs. Oh, we're going to mark this. Okay. Nothing exciting, but um, it ended up being it only had four pounds worth of gate spring in, and we're feeding boost to the top and bottom of the gate. And at 50% duty, I only got up to like just shy of 12 pounds. And uh, it's not nearly where we need to be. Yeah. And this car should be leaving at, you know, 10, 12 and first at the track. So we're pulling it out and putting around 12 pounds of gate spring in it. And then that'll allow me to bring the car up, you know, on the three port solenoid, you know, somewhere in the 30 range. And then once we need more from there, uh, we'll go on a four port solenoid. We're not gonna put, you know, 20, 25 pounds of gate spring in it since it's a front wheel drive car. I gotta at least have a, a low boost pressure off the gate spring to start with so we can get the car to hook and then work our way up. So we're in the middle of doing that right now. But the motor is broken in. It's now going on its actual oil it's gonna run. Um, oil pressures were a little bit high and we already did port the 
the relief house, um, oil pressure, oil filter housing relief well itself is already ported. It was a little high, not crazy, but sometimes that does it. Um, this one we gotta probably cut, cut one coil off the spring itself that actually has the pressure on the plunger. So, gonna do that to bring the oil pressure down just a little bit more and um, yeah, then um, we will be starting to turn it up more than the 12 pounds that it saw tonight. All right, welcome back. So, the two nights ago, we did the initial break in stuff. That's all done and good. Now, um, we were taking care of a few other things, putting it on the right oil, um, increased the wastegate spring pressure, doubled what was in it, and um, battling with a bleeder screw. So this car got brand new brakes all a year ago, but obviously parts store's uh, caliper used some really crummy bleeders. So it was a year old, broke off trying to bleed it. So I got an extractor in there, and then it broke in half when I extracted it, so I got the top half out. Then I had to drill it almost all the way in, put a bigger extractor in it, and take the second piece out. So that's some pretty great Chinese garbage material the bleeders are made out of, that it broke trying to bleed, and then broke in half when I was extracting it too. But I got it out of there. Kylie's running to one of his parts cars right now to grab the bleeder so we can put that in there, and then get the, blake, the brakes bled and should be good to go. So on the initial test drive, it was pretty spongy yet because that broke off that night. So we bled it at the line, just cheating it to get some of the air out and drove it. And it was still too, too soft for now that we're gonna start putting power in the car. But we're gonna get that bleeder hopefully taken care of and get the car back on the ground and put the VR1 in it for the oil and start tearing it up. All right, so we're out driving the car. What was that? Um, oh, I know what that was. Crap. Oh. This, and now the, the cap yeah. fell in there somewhere. It fell down in here somewhere. Oh, right here. Find it? GoPro is still going? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, shit. That scared me. <clears throat> Why the fuck didn't want to close? Because that this? probably was in there. That was in there. Okay, either way. So we're out driving the car. Um, putting a little boost in it. You're up to like 30 pounds in second gear and it ripped the tires off coming up over a bridge and it slipped a Hoosier on the wheel and tore the valve stem in the tube because there's tubes in these Hoosiers. So now we're waiting for my wife to run us the street tires down here for the car so we can get it back home. And definitely need to order a set of bead locks. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. yeah, she fucking spun them. Yeah, it came right up on it and fucking blew the tires off right to 8,000 RPM and ripped a tube in one of the Hoosiers. So. We're gonna go get a bite to eat at Culver's and wait for my wife to come save us. All right, well, we're back. Um, we're about to start getting some data as a poles. We did a third gear pull at some low medium boost. Got on the brakes, pushed clutch in, clutch never came back up. It actually somehow snapped the slave off. So we were stuck in fourth gear and we somehow got it back to town and got it into the shop here, but. Never seen that happen. It actually snapped the bracket off on a slave, so she's dangling there. But it happened. So, we're playing with it on some low boost settings and whatnot. So, on the lower boost, that, that last pull where it did that should have been like low 400 horse. When it ripped the Hoosier going through the data, that was probably mid 500 horse in second when it came up on. So, so that's where we're gonna leave it at for now. Um, we'll have a lot more coming. We're gonna get it fixed here track's coming up really soon in a week or so so we got to get this dialed and get a little more data on it but took time to watch this thank you like and subscribe